David Wars myself. Yeah, war within yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to conquer myself. Now the Buddhists say the more you fight it, the worse it gets. Now, how's the war going? Uh, sometimes he's a ceasefire, and sometimes there's great stability, and, and sometimes I'm uh, exploiting the best parts of myself. Tell me, tell me about one of your favorite. Uh, favorite what? Inner war. Uh, 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 my wife is here. I'm a very monogamous man. Very monogamous. But I that's a hell of a battle. Ah, that's right. I mean, you know, especially as you get older, uh, uh, sex for a man, I think, is a redemptive thing. It's not just sex, but it's a way of uh, power. power being renewed, I think. Uh, but uh, if you use it well and right, it can be very... Uh, uh, integrating, but it isn't always because we tend to want to possess what we desire. It's kind of a capitalism, an emotional capitalism. Don't you agree? <laughs> well, often money is involved with sex. It, it's a big industry. Uh, my friend and I have spoken about it in Berkeley for years. Uh, in fact, male sexuality is kind of a secret, uh, even though it's uh, in all these porno uh, magazines. Well, the point is men have to be responsible. What about, uh, yeah, remember Theodore Rosa? What did he say? I don't know. He said, speak softly but carry a big stick. Well, but many men are driven by that big stick. But uh, there are other things to life than sex. There's the battle for, uh, oh, no. uh, there's the battle to uh, meet the best of oneself. Uh, uh, so that war, what war? I don't like the word. That's my wife. That's my wife. She's up there speaking. She is. She is. She is. She has a great harmony of values. The woman, great. She's spiritualist, very practical. Uh, 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 thank you. She's very harmonious in her values. Uh, we've been married 44 years. So I would guess the trade-off has been worth it, really. Life has its trade-off. Exactly. Have you ever had an embargo? An embargo on what? Oh, well, has she ever had an embargo? Well, uh, what does an embargo mean? A refusal to give the goods? <laughs> yeah. Cutting off the boundaries. We try not to go to bed uh, uh, mad at each other. Uh, boundaries is a big issue in marriage, actually. There's so, uh, there are some people who are too intrusive in their boundaries. Uh, uh, there are other couples, the boundaries are too, uh, like, cement. Uh, in my own marriage, we sometimes are a bit too intrusive on each other. Though we have a great deal of freedom. Uh, if I may, those of you interested in relationships, there are two eyes in a we in all relationships. Two eyes and a we. And each have to be developed separately. Thank you. This is my lovely wife. She's part of the we. She has a very strong eye. But very seriously, relationships are very, very difficult. And uh, boundaries are a very significant aspect of all human interaction. Some people are too intrusive. Some people feel too much of another person's pain. Some people feel too little or empathize too little. Uh, there's a young boy looking there. Marriage is extremely difficult and relationships are, dif uh, are difficult. Uh, why? What's the uh, shirt that your wife got? I don't know. It says what? I, I got this for my husband. I got it because I can't return. I can't turn down anything that isn't. Uh, See, she's always getting me gifts, even I gifts that I don't want. <laughs> this would be nice, right? I think. That yes, darling. A lot of his. He, he claims that a lot of his shirts. He claims that a lot of his shirts have shrunk. He hasn't gotten any bigger, but a lot of the shirts have shrunk. So this now you see, a, uh, now this is an audience there. Say, she's infant, the mirror, she's right? infantilizing me now. <laughs> but there's a certain amount of love in it. So here's this nice.
nice extra large shirt that hasn't shrunk yet. Thank you very much, <laughs> darling. There's an element of teasing. But not all teasing is as hostile. It's, well, it's, oh. it's sometimes foreplay. <laughs> the beginning of foreplay. Yes. I so got my, one myself. My I wife is starting. I the tongue. To, to <laughs> duck. The, the, the I duck. Did, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd lick her. Uh, so I didn't think I'd be saying this to the audience, but uh, you should look at your relationships with respect to the two eyes and the we. That the I should also never interfere with the other person's uh, eye for uh, self-fulfillment. The only trouble is in our society now, every eye wants what it wants when it wants it. Every eye wants Well, uh, tell me, this is a Memorial Day weekend, but really, isn't it really a time to be with the family? It's really uh, all about relationships. Well, yeah, we do have, uh, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty strong uh, still in America. Uh, the family. I think politically we use the word family uh, to create some illusion of love and tranquility to constituents and people who want, uh, who need votes. But actually, to have family roots is an extremely enriching thing. Uh, to have people who love you, you could depend on. Uh, and I do. I do think uh, we have this in the United States. Your Eastern uh, cultures uh, may have a much more deeper tradition of This is a very American holiday this weekend, but I guess so. But uh, can you can you respond to that? I mean, uh, what is, is Memorial Day for the uh, Army? Is it wars? Yeah, I mean, this is really a tragic day, actually. Let me make a few comments on what I feel about war. Uh, I, 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 now that I have the mic, uh, can you imagine of how many millions of young people have been killed by older generals and older politicians? I believe very much in economic determination of problems, but there's also the Oedipal issues where uh, the older generation sacrifices the young competitors and I see it as almost universal you can't help watch uh, the uh, Chinese 17 and 18 year old decked out in their uniforms while their hormones are, are bursting controlled by a schmuck society just like our society quick trigger uh, war is a disastrous aspect of human perhaps nature. Is it, uh, human nature it appears to be that there's a murderous aspect a vengeful aspect uh, in the human brain is the amygdaloid nucleus which is responsible for territoriality however the goal of civilization is to impose a higher consciousness I mean, I cannot in a million years see myself as uh, pondering who to kill tomorrow. Part of it, not because I'm so self-righteous, I have a great deal of my life. Why would I? Also, in order to kill other people, you objectify them. You make them into objects. Or animals. Or animals, exactly. Exactly. And uh, it's a very sad thing in my life to see what's going on in uh, Israel, uh, Africa, that the, uh, the Muslims fighting the Hindus, the Christians. I have nothing but disdain for this part of uh, the human condition. Uh, I accept my evil, I don't feel self-righteous, but I'm absolutely tired of the arms industry. Uh, how in the world can anyone in the Mideast with a schmuck Arafat and a schmuck Sharon believe there can be peace in the Israel when two assholes are uh, the... Uh, and I, I have no, no inhibition of calling these people schmucks in Israel. I, I, uh, schmucks uh, and shlemiels and putzes. I grew up in the 40s when I saw all the nice niceties of people wearing ties and white shirts and embalming each other. Arafat and Sharon 
are absolutely assholes, schmucks, and uh, there is something wrong with the mentality of both the Israels and the Arabs not to want the best for each other and their children. Well, isn't that a problem with power and leadership in all, all uh, facets of the world that uh, it kind of creates schmucks and putzes? I think uh, uh, Mr. Brigham brings up a very good question. Just call me the patient. The patient. Why cannot, why cannot, why can't we have moral and visionary power? Why? I think FDR was a, a, a good man, and we had Adlai Stevenson, but in general, Jimmy Carter. Uh, Jimmy Carter was a. Ah, oh, he was. A, he's a very humane man. The he, had, he had a few too many peanuts. Yeah, he was a good man. He's a good man, uh, Carter. It's an essential question: of why do politicians ruin their own country as well as other people? Uh, I have always been very preoccupied with this issue since I've been a young boy of why men fight, why men kill. It's an essential issue and I wish the people in Boulder would start writing letters to the arms industry here because these are a bunch of schmucks and a-religious people who are making bombs and guns and selling it to other people to kill. I think women are different hormonally, of course. Basically, maybe much less militant than men, but a lot of women are buying a certain aggressivity in our culture. And what we have a peculiar kind of things in the culture distinction becomes a road to power. Not necessarily for the disabled, not necessarily for the poverty, but for a lot of people, you know, feminism. Uh, while it's very important for opportunity, the hatred I have seen that many women have for men is rampant. I am not going to do reparations for my fellow men who have raped and molested and beat up women. So you would maybe believe that there is a, a increase in the bourgeois vagina complex within our society. Well, what is that, the bourgeois vagina complex? I don't know. I don't know. All right, I just, all right. <laughs> We have enough of these, uh, that's fine. You know, like the penis envy, uh, it never dawned upon women uh, or anyone that maybe men envy the harmony of the woman's body, the beauty of the breasts, the curves, and maybe there is a, 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 a penis envy in women, uh, but that's not the issue, that's not the issue. The issue is how can we love each other deeply while keeping our individuality. Sexual power from sex. Sex is a big thing for men. It is for some women, too. Uh, sexually, men have to be responsible for their sexuality. And I guess many women, uh, women have made a, a lot of money from men's sexual... Uh, in fact, one of the things on television, men look like assholes anytime they see a beautiful woman. If you notice, they open their mouths, they begin to twitter, their eyes blink, they faint. You take a lot of these ads in which they use a seductive woman, and the, recipro the recipient male uh, responds like a schmuck, someone overwhelmed with the sexuality. Let's face it, there's something very beautiful in a man seducing a woman, kissing her body, loving her, overpowering her, but satisfying her. This should not be historically absurd. We're going to the dance station. I want to see the flamenco dances between 1.30 and We've had to tolerate each other. She's a good woman. I want to go also and walk through the art. But she, she, she bosses me around. You see it? She's scheduling me as we talk. She's scheduling me. Said, I'm, you want me to tell you the story about this next? Do you see this necklace? Yes. Yeah, Can you show it to the camera? Can you see it? This is a beautiful necklace, right? Did more give that to you? Okay, I'm going to tell you the story of this necklace. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> um, yesterday, the I don't know if I should tell this public. I will tell it publicly. Oh, yes. Yesterday, the Humane That's Society, the which is it, really. which is really great, the Humane Society <laughs> had a basket and it was one dollar each, anything for a dollar. 
and I was going through it and I saw this necklace and I said this looks like a piece by Ann Dick. She's a very famous California artist, her work is a museum and it's very, very, very expensive. And I looked at it, and it's a signed piece by Antic, and I got it and for a dollar. Somebody actually had it in there for a dollar. It was, it was. I'll so give you two. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you know, Philip, Di he's a um, science fiction writer, Philip Dick. Yes. It, it, does he? <laughs> write about missiles? <laughs> no. Anyway, forget it. They but that, this is a true story. My wife this is, right, this this is a drop. true that's story that I got. That's it. That's all she's you got. What do you want to do? No, you, you need something more. This no, is incredible. You got a great deal. I'm delighted. I'm grateful to Boulder. Grateful to Boulder. She's an artist. She's frugal. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll go with you, darling. Okay. Honey. Can I come? Well, we're going to the flamingo. Yeah, let's go. Let's well, go walking. videotape wait, wait, some flamingos. Wait, wait, no, but before I want to walk through and get and listen, look, look at this beautiful ring right. I got. Where'd you find that? Um, in the, I mean, this was this was seven dollars. I mean, seven dollars! Oh, my God, you it's a you could have gotten seven of those necklaces. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go get another one though of these. I think these are beautiful. You want to come with me yeah, to the? Yeah, we'll come. We'll all come. Okay.